Several child hostages have been freed in the temporary ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. More expected to be released today. But the youngest hostage taken by Hamas has just been put in greater danger in a tragic turn of events. The terrorists have handed over their youngest hostage, a 10-month-old boy named Kafir Bibis, and his family, Ariel and Shiri, not to the Israelis, but to a separate Palestinian terror group. I can't imagine getting that kind of news. Family's relatives left reeling from the move, calling it just more psychological torture, with fears mounting that Hamas's child hostages are being held as a, quote, trophy. Hello, everyone. This is Outnumbered. I'm Kaylee McEnany, here with my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Emily Campagno. Also joining us, former NFL sideline reporter and host of the Michelle Tafoya podcast, <coughs> Michelle Tafoya, and Fox News contributor and host of the David Webb show on Sirius XM Patriot, David Webb. Kafir's aunt thinks he is being held underground, no sunlight, raising concerns that he could be put in the middle of an IDF assault against Hamas if he is not released by the end of the ceasefire, which has been extended until tomorrow. Kafir Zan also revealed some of the traumatic details surrounding Kafir's abduction to the Times of Israel. Listen to this. The terrorists slaughtered nearly half of his hometown. The Times of Israel reports that little Kafir and his four-year-old brother Ariel were huddled with their parents, Shiri and Yarden, desperately hiding in a safe room armed only with a pistol. Yarden, the father, texted her that the boys were having a hard time staying quiet. How can you keep a nine-month-old quiet, a four-year-old quiet, as the terrorists assaulted their kibbutz and that it felt like the end? Yarden's last message, his last two messages were, I love you, and then they're in. Photographers captured images of Shiri surrounded by Hamas terrorists as she clutched her babies in her arms, a mother's love. Now, the rest of Kafir's family is speaking out about their struggles to remain hopeful about their loved one's release. I can't say we are surprised about the level of cruelty and inhumane behavior from Hamas. In this deal, in this ceasefire, they signed an agreement to release all women and children. Tomorrow is the last day, supposedly, of this ceasefire of this agreement as it was signed and there's still no news about my family if they will be returned or not we're waiting hopelessly trying to remain positive every day counts for that baby i'm not a politician i'm not a military general i'm a family member uh my heart is broken mm. You know, Harris, that was Yafat, and I'm going to ask our team uh, to put up a picture of Ariel and of Kafir. So this, this was announced Tuesday that there was a hostage deal last Tuesday. We didn't know the names of any of the hostages at that point. Well, Yafat, who you just heard from, she posted this about 24 hours after that deal was announced. We must muster the little strength we have to avoid falling apart. We try to resist the urge to anticipate, hope, celebrate, or even imagine, because never before has anyone felt so close and yet so far away from something at the same time. Everyone thinks we are excited, but we are not. We are tense, alert, and on edge. We will remain this way until the moment we hold our family in our arms. We are horrified at the thought of being disappointed. We still pray for these two boys, but the news that they are now in the hands of other groups. Kaylee, where you started the hour is really where we need to put our focus. It's where Admiral Kirby, who is now um, the NCS, uh, NSC spokesperson for the White House now, it's where Ambassador Danny Danone told me from Tel Aviv today is his focus. It is the fact that this child is not with Hamas. Mm -hmm. This child is with Islamic terrorists. Maybe gangs of people is how he put it which is very unsettling. And while Hamas will be held accountable, he said, for any harm that happens to people, we don't know as much now. There's not a, a, a straight information line to this child and some others they've taken. And we also don't know what their end game is. Gangs of people, that means money's involved, maybe not even ideology. We don't really know. I just know that, according to his aunt, he was born on January 18th. And as we, you know, look, Hanukkah comes early this year. It starts on the 8th. January 18th cannot come without that baby being home. I mean, we, we know that there's some hard dates before us now. 
We know some of what's happened. I know the ambassador last hour didn't want to go into detail very much about what's going on if they're in the dark and they're underground. They're treated very badly um, if you're over 12. He, he couldn't even say that. He was swallowing his words. They were beating them. It's a lot. It's a lot. So it's, it's prayer. It's also the understanding that when a ceasefire breaks, it is a sign that one side wasn't keeping it anyway. So, so how do you fight against terrorists without killing them? Yeah. I don't think you can. No, I don't think you can. Um, that's very well said. And Emily, you know, if you think about the emotional journey of this family, imagine if, if your little cousin was in the hands of terrorists, right? And you hear there's this deal last Tuesday and you don't know the names yet and you, you're hopeful. And then you hear Friday comes along. The people being released are from their kibbutz near Oz. And you're thinking, it's his kibbutz. And then yesterday, more from kibbutz near Oz. And then we're extending the ceasefire by two days, 20 more babies and, and mothers being released. The hope that you feel and then the tragedy you feel when you hear about them being transferred out of Hamas hands. And you, <clears throat> you know, you, you talk about that hope and I can only imagine the unwavering faith and hope in God because there is no way you can have any faith or hope in the monsters that in this moment have this beautiful baby and so many families under their watch passing it off to gangs and other terrible monsters. And I underscore what Yafat said earlier on Fox and Friends when she said, I can't say that we are surprised about the level of cruelty and inhumane behavior from Hamas during this ceasefire. She knows, just like everyone, which is why it is so appalling, in my opinion, that this administration continues to put conditions on Israel's support. Um, because we know that these are monsters, and how can you have faith that they will rise to the occasion and do exactly what we hope or ask or say that they will? Three separate reports this morning coming out of D.C., one saying that the Democrats are efforting to put conditions on any aid to Israel. Secondly, that the president told Israel it must work to avoid significant further displacement of Palestinian civilians. Thirdly, that the CIA chief Meet, meeting with the head of Mossad to push for a different approach in hostage negotiations. To underscore the point I've been making, the fear of escalation from this administration and therefore the conditions that they place on Israel and Ukraine for the same reasons means that they are furthering Hamas's interests. Yeah. They are not furthering Israel's strength. And they are contributing to Hamas's goal and Islamic Jihad and Iran's goal, which is to have global condemnation of Israel. So by telling us, by telling them continually, telling Israel, put on the brakes, slow down, calm down, that is inspiring even further misplaced condemnation about them responding. Michelle, it's like when he said, Israel, control your rage. Yep. Like, I, I'm sorry, you have a 10 month old, now 11 month old child, control your rage? And they have controlled it, right? They have taken so many steps to be, to have precaution, to take precaution, to minimize civilian deaths. I don't think other countries would take as much precaution as Israel had. You've made so many great points, everyone. I want to add a personal one. We have a dear friend, an 18-year-old boy. I'm not going to name him. He is over in Jerusalem. He just graduated high school, and he decided before entering college he was going to take a year, he's Jewish, to study in Jerusalem. He was there before October 7th. October 7th happened, and I texted the family, are you bringing him home? Are you bringing him home? And they said, no, these colors don't run. We don't run. And that is emblematic of the strength that Jews in Israel do have. I love history. I'm a history buff. This is history I never thought I'd see again after the Holocaust. But they are strong. In, in Israel, they are strong in spite of what anyone else wants them to do. Yeah, and the people tearing down posters, the people acting like these children aren't real. David, this is how Holocausts do happen, is denying that yes. these people deserve humanity, exist, and deserve to be with their families. Yeah, and look, all the points, again, to Michelle's point, you've all made great points about this, but pay closer attention, this is what I would say to the American people and to the world. Operationally, Israel continues to do what they need to do. The Biden administration can call for two-state solution. They can try diplomatic pressure. Facts are even the IDF, by their own rules, do not want others fighting their wars. They will defend their country. They will take on the enemy. But operationally, and even during this so-called ceasefire, which it's not a ceasefire unless both sides cease, Israel operationally still gathering intelligence, 
still doing what they need to do and trying to get as many people back. These hostages are currency. Mm -hmm. That's all they are for Hamas. They are currency. But there is a short-term and a long-term view that has to exist for all of us, which is in the short term, they have to do what they need to do and eliminate as much of Hamas as possible, because in the long term, there will be a better future, even with the loss of life, and yes, unfortunately, some, and possibly the loss of some of these hostages. Yeah, they're currency to Hamas, but they are precious children to anyone with an ounce of humanity.